Yes, Judge, it depends on who's wiring up what. They have one over there. They have a buddy mic on it. Several things to that effect to try and evade 
having this answer concern so she can raise the air court. Whatever her feelings are about being involved, that's not our concern. Our concern is protecting the rights of our client. And I can state with certainty that no one, as far as I know, either myself, Mr. Brown, my process server, or anyone in my office who's tried to get in contact with her has made any threats or anything to try to get her to change her testimony. Judge, I don't, I'm not saying that the defense has. I'm just saying what the uh, woman has said to me. Uh, what little I could hear of her, I believe she told me she was at a doctor's office and there was a baby screaming in the background. So at this point, I don't believe she's doing anything towards appearing here. I told her my secretary would call back and, you know, because she doesn't want to do anything to get herself in trouble, but she's, you know, she's scared. That's the bottom line. Right. So I don't know that I have any further requirement. I have done, you know, what I think I should do. Let's go back to... Well, Judge, I have a concern with saying Mr. Rubin said. He did say Ms. Anderson told him that she wasn't sure. Now would it happen at the rental car place? Is that, is that she said that? words to the effect of, you know, I don't remember the precise words exactly, but she waffled a little bit while saying that she told the truth and that she was afraid while her baby was crying in the background. Okay, because it's something different from what I heard Ms. Brown say. I, I can't quote her. her. You know, I just can't quote her. She waffled a little bit. I can't remember the precise words, and during the conversation she said she was scared and that she told the truth um, when she was here in court. So... There's nothing further that I can really tell you about that right this second. As I said, there's a baby screaming in the background the whole time. She's very difficult to talk with. She hesitates before she speaks. And she testifies. She doesn't want to be involved. Because so, I would tell the court, you know, we've heard also information, as well as Mr. Rubin has, including that Detective Scobia stood with Ms. Anderson in close proximity the entire time she was here in the hallway before she testified and told her that her parents were not allowed to come to the courtroom to watch her testify. We've also been hearing of uh, prosecutors' conversations with witnesses telling them they could potentially be charged with an accessory to testify in this case. I have no idea what he's talking about. No. I'm talking about Rosemary Johnson. Rosemary Johnson? Rosemary Johnson, if called to testify, would testify that she saw your client at the dealership at the Hertz, and she specifically asked her daughter about whether he's the one getting the car. And the last time she rented the car, she had to go back to your client's uh, house to get the keys for it. And that's in her statement and her deposition. So I don't know what you're talking about. Um, did you, did you not tell her she could face charges as an accessory for, for providing the car? Absolutely not. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. record on that. So here you have it, Judge. Uh, time and time again, you know, I try to act in good faith. I try to obey the court's instructions from witness list to whatnot. And all I, that I hear is not, you know, uh, I'm not happy with that, but it's always some personal accusation about some kind of misconduct. And so I'm sorry that it's uh, become this, but if we can move on from a scheduling standpoint, with regard to Ms. Morse, I would need to depose her if she plans to testify. Judge, they made Ms. Morse, they brought Ms. Morse to the case, we weren't aware of her. The first time we ever heard of her name, and we heard her first name, was when Ms. Anderson testified, which we contend is false testimony, she's making up a story, so she says, because she has to provide a driver for Mr. Rivera's car, it makes no sense that Mr. Rivera, of course, would drive his own car there and then drive the SUV away, you know, he's underage to rent it. So in order to explain that, she said, my cousin Demetria drove Mr. Rivera's car away. Now, since that's the first time we heard of it, we had to start looking into this, asking family members to ask around the court buyers, did they know of any relative with a name who liked Demetria, because that's what we thought we heard, related to Ms. Anderson, and we had found out she has a cousin by the name of Demetria Morse, to which our next step was, well, can we get a hold of this person to ask her if she ever was out of Hertz rent a car in November of 2007, if she recalls, you know, seeing Mr. Rivera being there, driving his car, anything of that nature, which we found out and answered all that as a name. She is cousin of Ms. Anderson, but she never went to the said they never drove Mr. Rivera's car or saw Mr. Rivera. So that's the reason we're bringing it up now, because we just now figured out who this person was and made contact with her. 
Judge, I don't remember right on the second as I sit here what's on the seat. It, uh, unfortunately, it's not transcribed, so I'd have to go back and listen to see if it's there or not, which I'll do wherever the lines are. But I believe the issue of this person came up during cross-examination. And the bottom line is that if the defense were to plan to call her, then I would need to have an op- I would ask for, if the court were to agree to do that, I would ask for an opportunity to take her deposition and get an overnight transcript. Well, she could be deposed right before she testifies, Judge, and the reporter would be able to read back, sorry, any, any questions or answers that the state not were consistent with what they said prior. You know, this is an issue arose from their witness, Judge. You asked all cross-examination. I don't believe she testified to that or the fact that, what else was it, that he brought the car back, all of came up on cross-examination. And unfortunately, um, as I said before, I don't believe Alexi Anderson is happy about testifying to what it is that she remembered, but evidently she knows a fair amount about your client. And you asked her those questions and she testified to them. So you're asking for permission to call Demetra Morris and your wife. Is she on the way here? I believe, I don't know if she's left yet. I wanted to see if she was going to be allowed to testify before she started driving. Okay. But you have Romaine Johnson here, right? Romaine Johnson yes. was there, yes. right? Yes. And is Romaine Johnson going to say that Demetria Morris wasn't there? And if she is, then why would you want Demetria Morris? Because, Judge, one of the stars on the stage, they're charged by clients of principal. They produced a witness, Ms. Anderson, who pretends is lying. She's been intimidated in the line. We have one witness who's clearly going to counter her testimony and is going to testify in a few moments. We have another witness that we believe has been intimidated about a hearing. We want the additional witness who Ms. Anderson brought up herself said she's my cousin to counter her and say, yeah, I am her cousin, but I wasn't at the Hertz that day. I didn't drive Eric Romero's car. And it's just, essential to our case. And just if I may, we were prepared to have both Romaine Johnson and her mother, Rosemary Johnson, to come here to testify. I spoke with Rosemary last night, and she stated that she was not going to testify unless she spoke with the state first. And it's my understanding that after speaking with the state, she decided she was not coming and she did not come today. I don't know what conversation, well, there you have it, another accusation of some kind. I don't know what kind of conversation she had with Rosemary Johnson, but my secretary and I have been in touch with her on a daily basis, and the only questions I asked her besides what she remembered was, have you been served? Do you know if your daughter's been served? Please give me a call if you get any of that information. So that's the discussion that my, my trial coordinator and I have had with her, notwithstanding the continued jives from the defense. Okay. I understand the defendant's here and ready to testify, so perhaps we can remain John. Remain not going to be here if you want, then we can move on to the defendant and take it from there. Okay. Well, just do we have an answer to that on whether or not we're going to be allowed to have this more steps like to be like that or come? Come on, get on the way here.
Thank you, Judge. All right, see you, please. Members of my jury, welcome back. You saw my instructions last night. Yes, sir. It's about 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock in Denver, so we're just a little early today. All right, defense, call your next witness, please. Thank you, Defense, call me for me. Good morning, Ms. Johnson. Good morning. Now, if you could state your whole name for the record. Romaine Johnson. Okay. And Ms. Johnson, where do you currently live? Fort Myers, Florida. And how long have you lived there? Seven to eight years. Okay. Were you living there back in November 2007? Yes. Back then, how old were you in 2007? Fourteen. Okay. Now, I want to call your attention to um, a date in November concerning a rental car. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And who is Rosemarie Johnson? My mother. Okay. And do you know Eric Rivera? No. Do you know Charles Wardlow? Yes. Okay. And how do you know Charles? Through a friend. Okay. Well, an old friend. And do you know Alexia Anderson? Yes. And how do you know Alexia? I used to date her brother back then. Okay. Now, did your mom rent a rental car in November of 2007? Yes. And what, were, what was the reason your mom rented the car? Uh, we told her for me and my friend to go to a classic in Orlando. Okay. Now, what's a classic? It happens um, every year in November, like a, where people bring car shows and just a big event. Okay. And is it based around the football game? I'm not sure. Okay. And you wanted to go so you could hang out with your friends? Yes, that's what we told her. Okay. And when you say we, who are you referring to? Me and, me and Alexia Anderson. Okay. Do you know how old Alexia was? Maybe 20, uh, 19, I okay. think. But she was older than you? Yes, she was older than me. Okay. Were you old enough to drive? 14, no. Okay. And did your mom agree to rent the car for you and Alexia? Yes. Okay. And what happened when you went to the rental car place? Uh, she rented us the car and... We left in the car, and later on, we dropped her off, and me, Alexia, and Charles was left in the car. Okay. Now, going back to, do you remember which rental car place it was? Yes, it was Hertz on Fowler in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. Now, when you got to the Hertz place, who went, who went to Hertz with you? Me, my mom, and Alexia. Okay. And do you remember um, if Charles was at the rental car place? I'm really not sure if he was there. Okay. Do you know if Eric was at the rental car place? No, he wasn't there. Okay. And once you got to the rental car agency, who actually signed the contract to rent the car? My mother. Okay. And why did your mom rent the car? Because we told her we were going somewhere. Okay. And did your mom drive the rental car? Yes, they won't let nobody else drive away. Okay. And 
after your mom drove away in the rental car, what car were you in? It was like a little, I don't know if it was a Highlander, a black Highlander. It was in a Highlander. And that was the rental car? Yes. Okay. And where was Alexia? What car did she leave her in? We was in the same car. Okay. And where was Charles? I'm not for sure how we got with him, but we eventually ended up with him. Okay. And did Charles leave Hertz with you or you met up with Charles later? I think we met up with him later. Okay. Now, at any point, do you remember um, Eric being at the Hertz at all? No. Okay. And how did the rental car get returned to Hertz? Um, it was left, well, we picked it up at a um, school in Fort Myers and my mom brought it back. Now, do you know Alexia's cousin, Demetria? Yes, I know her. And do you know her through dating the boyfriend? Yes. Okay. Do you recall if Demetria was at Hertz that day? No, she wasn't. Okay. Do you recall ever seeing Demetria with Eric? No. Just a second, I just remembered. Yes. Romaine, did your mom, was your mom also going to be here today? Jackie. Was your mom planning on coming here today? Uh, she was, but. Okay. Is she here with you today? No, she's not. Nothing for her, but Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Johnson.